church and the saints at large, I greet you all in the name of Jesus. Verse 8. Umkwebi olulungisa ingabindi mgetwa ke ibe ngaba bonke abagutanda yo ukubona kala kwayo. Thank you, Lord, for your word. We bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Over seven wam apagum uti I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. Not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. You may be seated. By the grace of God tonight, saints, allow me to share with you what the Holy Spirit has laid in my heart this evening with a title that says a good fight of faith tell your neighbor tell your other neighbor a good fight of faith First of all, allow me to reveal 
something which may be is hidden to people's eyes about the church first of all secondly about a believer amen yesterday I touched here and there the matter of the light of God in a humankind every person who is born of God receives a portion of light in his life glory to Jesus secondly every ministry or a congregation or a church has its divine light that depends on the nature or on the manner of the calling or the assignment are we there every ministry if there is a ministry established by God there surely going to be a particular light in that ministry for an example here we are given an assignment of peace and holiness And this message, according to our vision, we are saying, we are preparing the saints for the second coming of the Lord. That means it is the message relevant for the time. Now this divine light that is shining, if such a light can attract flies, light butterflies, how much more will the divine light of God attract spiritual flies called demons? Are we still together? This ministry called SWRC, I pray and hope that all her sons may understand that it's not just a congregation. But it's a plan of God that all may be made holy. There is a divine light in this ministry. Many that I preached about it because in the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 17 the Bible says faith comes by hearing the word of God that's why many people if I preach about something their faith is kindled they would start to see it amen so far it's 
2% of this ministry that ever experienced such a light. It's 2%, 98% never saw that light. And the majority of the people who ever experienced or saw that light are people from afar. It's my prayer that may God give us grace to see that divine light. I have a reason not saying to see that light, but to use the word divine light. I have a reason. Because a light, when you are looking at it, it somehow troubles your eyes. But a divine light, when you look at it, the more it draws your eyes, not to blind them, but you see the more, the more, the more. That's why it is called divine light. The natural light, it blinds our eyes when we look at it. But the divine light, the more you see it, the more it opens, it apocalypt your eyes to see more and more. Glory to God. That's why the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4, 18 to 21, it says the way of the righteous is like dawning of the day unto the perfect maturity of the day. This means when you experience this divine light, the more you get closer to it, the more you are aware of how sinful you are, how weak you are, how unable you are, how useless you are without the grace of God. And the more you experience such shortcomings, it is the more you will seek more of his grace and his glory. We are unable beings, all of us. We cannot please God. No matter how much we may try, we will fail without his grace. That's why the book of Titus, chapter 3, verse 5, the Bible says, through his mercy, he saved us. Ephesians 2, 5 and 8, we are saved by grace through faith. Verse 9 says, let no man should boast. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. 131, the Bible says, He who boasts must boast of the Lord because we are unable. This divine light tells us and shows us how naked we are before the Almighty, how filthy we are. There is no self-righteousness or any sort of justification. We are all condemned. But the man called Jesus, the man called Jesus, he said, let me be sin for them. If you read the book of First John chapter 1 verse 5, there is a phenomenal statement which the Bible used there, which says, God is light. In him, there is no darkness at all. What does this mean? How can wretched people like us approach such a divine light full of sin how 
possible is that only by the merits of the blood of Jesus. Dr. Timothy Mieni, when he composed a song that says, Wakazimla, indeed, Jesus Christ, while he was bloody on the cross physically, in the spirit, he was full of light, drawing everyone afar. That's why the place of his cross, geographically, it is proven that it is in the center of the globe of planet Earth. That's how accurate God is. It had to be the light that shines brighter in the middle of the earth so that everyone may receive a portion of light. Those who are far like us and those who are closer who are in the Middle East. Even this ministry having a full conviction that it is established by Jesus Christ himself. Remembering exactly the voice that spoke to me on the 10th February, 10th March 2012. That same voice that spoke in 2012. It is the same voice that spoke to me in January 2007 when they took me out of my body. It is the same voice that said to me, call Jesus. It is that same voice that said, fly high. And now I, have belie I believe with all of my heart and my fibers that it was the voice of the Holy Spirit. Still, the voice of the Holy Spirit. Now when the Holy Spirit speaks to one's heart, his or her heart is enlightened to produce light. If SWRC has that divine light, it will not escape the flies of the spirit. It will suffer attacks, persecutions until it learns to produce more light in the midst of the shadowy flies of death. If you are a son of this vision, you will not escape persecution. You will not escape trials. You will not escape hatred. That's why it will be very wise of you to keep quiet and pray the more. Are we joining together? Your life as a child of God should be illuminated by the light of God for it to function for God. Yes, because the enemy, our common enemy, Satan, knows us one by one, knows even what we are carrying. He will bring distractions so that our light may not shine and shine towards others. There is something so profound about this ministry that you should understand. The more the persecution, the more the light shines brighter. I wish I can go as far as telling you that affliction and persecution is actually the oil 
of this light. Therefore, we will not fight against the oil because when the oil stops, the light dims. When the waves of hate are ambushing us, it is the time we will reveal what we are made of and who we are. Unless tested, it cannot be trusted. Tell your neighbor. Shake your neighbor and speak these words. Unless tested, it can never be trusted. If we say we will be glorified with Christ, you must know we will never escape the persecution of Christ. If we say we are the followers of Jesus, no way the haters of Jesus will love his followers. His followers. Let us now come and understand who hated Christ. Is it unbelievers or believers? Class? Believers. John 16 verse 2 goes as far as saying those who will kill you will think they are doing service to God. This means people will find pleasure in destroying the plan of God in our lives. In defense of God. What does Acts chapter 9 say? The man called Saul who was later on changed to be Paul. He said, with all zealous heart, I persecuted the church. Why he says that? It is because in his mind, he thought that he is working for God, yet he was working against God. There is something that I wish we may somehow understand as children of God in this era. When we say, Lord, I need your anointing, we are actually saying, Lord, allow persecution. Who knows that? When we pray and say, Lord, anoint me, we are at the very same time saying, Lord, expose me to the persecution. Why Apostle Paul said, we are a sweet aroma to those who are living. And we are a bad savour to those who are perishing. He meant that those who are fully immersed in the will of God will benefit from us. But those who are double-minded, who are living a worldly and a godly life at the same time, they will find offense from us. Your light should illuminate, 
should enlighten, should show direction to the beholders. Even if the flies and the butterflies come to cover it. And the only oil I know is the oil of persecution. Tribulation. Here in the scripture, the man of God, Paul, is giving this letter, which with all of my heart, I delightly love to share with you, my brothers and sisters. When the ministry which is established by Jesus Christ starts, it suffers ridicules, disrespect. When it continues, it suffers noise. But when it is in its peak, it suffers persecution. That means from the start until the end, we are not immune from persecution. Make peace with that. Another thing that I'm praying for is that may my children know time and seasons. You must know when the waves are too thick against you. You must know your next level is just in inches away. The greater the door the greater the opposition, the thicker the waves, the thicker your faith should be. Many give up in this life and journey because of such. Just before I came, a pastor friend of mine residing in Cape Town calls me and tells me about things that are not going well with him. And somehow <laughs> asking me, the toilet so that I bring him there. Now he's ready to betray Jesus who betrayed him. My wife was next to me. She laughed. He proceeds by saying, I did everything right for God, but God did nothing for me. I said to him, desperation can bring you to a place whereby you will forget even the fundamentals and essential things which God did for you. I started to remind him of the testimony he shared with me once when we were young. How God saved him. How God rescued him. How God carried him. I said to him, because of your failing businesses, because of your failing marriage, because of this and that, I started to remind him. And then I said to him, don't give up now. 8.35 of Mark. Jesus Christ is saying, very sad. What shall a man gain or benefit if he gains all the world and its pleasures, splendors, and treasures, yet loses his soul?
when the heat wave is hotter you are given a challenge to increase your faith against it is there anyone in this house who knows that they are a light if you are here just raise up your hand so that i may know who i'm talking to if you know that i am a light of the world i'm a light to my family i want i want to see this so that i may not deliver the message to wrong people sondela paul after he persecuted the church he had many friends when he was in the game of hating christians killing them destroying every temple he had many friends but the moment he he was converted all left him he was a loner in 2012 i wrote on facebook i was still new i wrote this statement out of the conviction of the holy spirit that apostles and prophets are lonely people they are not people who are always mingling in the affairs of people they are loners that's why in the book of acts chapter 6 verse 2 and verse 4 it says we will not be in tables but we will separate ourselves in ministry of the word and prayer i wrote this statement that apostles i'm talking about true apostles of jesus christ and true prophets of the lord i said they are lonely beings my friends who were my friends back then who were prophets they stood against me saying no it's a lie during that time i had no strength and the courage that i have now I never answered they mingled amongst people they mingled amongst people because of fame because of 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 applauses and love of people this day they are drunkards this day they are womanizers this day they are changing partners you can never get hold of god and get hold of people at the same time it's either you are selling yourself for god and god alone or for people if you immerse yourself in the presence of god surely you will suffer the hate of people this man called Paul lived a life of a loner always constant in prayers fastings in the businesses of his boss in this passage that i'm reading tonight seeing seven days of his departure he says in this verse 6 i am ready to be poured like an offering looking back seeing the work done saying 
in Romans 8, 17 and 18. The current afflictions will not be equal to the future glory that is about to be revealed. is too weak for the glory which is ahead. We heard him saying that. He lived his conversion life in and out of prison. If you read 2 Corinthians chapter 11 25 to 30. Read for me. You will hear something profound. Twenty-five to thirty. Twenty-five to thirty. Where is the microphone? I will read it to me. It says, Thrice was I beaten with the rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep in journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heavens, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness, in painfulness, in watchmen, in watchings often, in hunger, in thirsty, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness. Besides those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak? And I'm not weak. Who is offended? And I bear not. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concerns my infirmities. The God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ is blessed forever and ever. In the midst of anything that is counting here, he says, but God is blessed. He is worthy of all the glory. That's why looking back tonight, he says, I have fought a good fight of faith. This fight was not a physical fight because faith is not a natural thing. Faith is a thing of the spirit. I have fought a good fight of faith. In my fighting and wrestling, I have finished my cause. How many people who are fighting and fighting and fighting later on their end is vanity. I once preached a message in this church whereby I was saying many are starting but few are finishing. My brothers and sisters, I'm telling you the truth in the Lord. More suffering, more persecution, more affliction, more challenges is at hand. Keep your faith. gospel is not a gospel of I receive, I receive. We are carrying death day in, day out for what we are carrying. That's why he says in the book of Romans chapter 8 all day long For your name's sake, we are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. All 
day long. They hunt us. I will preach. you will not last what we are in is a matter of life and death Paul says I have finished my course I have fought a good fight of faith. They laid up for me the crown of righteousness. At the end of my journey, when I will stepping in the shores of glory, Walking slowly in the steps of gold. In the gathering of the Holy Spirit and holy angels. When I will be ascending step by step. The Lamb of God that was slain for me. He will be standing there with open arms waiting to shake my hand with the words well done my faithful servant how glorious it is how precious it is in the face of the Lord the death of his saints. Psalms 116 verse 15 tells us so. There are people, my brothers and sisters, when they go to heaven, Jesus sees them and sends forth an angel and say, go and welcome him. people when they go to heaven when
and Jesus sees them, he just say, welcome to the kingdom of God. He turns back. But there are another caliber. When they are coming, the trumpets of heaven sounds. There is a God of honor in the highway of holiness. If from the earth to heaven it's thousand steps, every step left and right, there are angels dressing white with the leaves, green leaves. When you are passing by, they are like this. In front, Yehoshua Hamashiach will be standing in his garment of holiness, full of twinkling stars of joy, waiting for you just to say, Well done, my faithful servant. After that, he hugs you. He turns with you. And go present you to his father. This was my faithful soldier, daddy. He did not deny my name and defied my word. He fought until the end. He never suffered any emotional action of blackmail but what he did he walked by faith throughout the journey may it not be me alone apostle Paul says may it not be me alone but may it be all those who lived for the Lord. He died for all the living. That the living may not live for themselves but live for the one who died for them and rose back again. Verse 14 says the love of Christ constrains me. That even if I don't feel to continue, I will continue. Even if I feel discouraged, I will continue. Even if I feel too down to worship and preach, I will continue. The love of Christ constrains us. My brothers and sisters, this life we are in it's not a celebrity life but it's a life of a sheep hunted to be slain that's why our dependency is not from us first corinthians 4 7 the lord says these riches these treasures we are carrying them with jars of clay so that the abundance of power may not ooze may not cause may not come or spring forth from our strength but from the Lord every day we live for him where emotions they are there but faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things unseen for by faith we know that the worlds were formed and created that which we see comes from that which is unseen we know by faith Abel gave 
receive an acceptable offering than that of Cain. And though he is dead, but he still speaks. By faith, Moses counted it unto not to be called by the daughter of Pharaoh. He chose to be entreated with the children of God than to partake in the sins of Egypt for a moment. He chose to be hated, to be hunted, if possible to be killed in the congregation of the Lord. My appeal to you, keep your faith and don't lose it anytime, anywhere. The Bible says in Isaiah 59 verse 19, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall raise the standard against him. I see that the dining room is now being promoted from national to be international ministry. Soon and very soon, soon and very soon, there will be people overseas coming to this ministry and say, the Lord spoke with us. We want to build you a bigger house because what you are carrying supposed to be drank by the nations. Glory to the living God. Are you ready? The question is, can you handle it? When the whole world is against you, will you say, kill me for who I am? Because in him I live. Because in him I move. Because in him I have my being. I better die in Christ than to live in the world. I better suffer with Christ than to be accepted by the world. I am the soldier of the cross. I am the ambassador of heaven. I am the son of God. Be it death. In the book of Romans 8, the Bible says in 38 and 39, what can separate me from the love of God? Is it persecution? Is it tribulation? Is it trial? Is it hunger? Is it nakedness? No, not one. Nothing can separate me from the love of Christ. Nothing! The depths cannot separate me. The width cannot separate me. The height cannot separate me. The principalities, the rulers and the powers, the demons cannot separate me. The rejection cannot separate me. Because for the Lord I live. If possible, for the Lord I will die. I was born by the Lord. I was born in the Lord. I am born for the Lord. That is what you must ask yourself. Can you handle it? When the whole world is against you. When the whole world is in your case. Who should you consult first? When you feel so pained. Hallelujah. Can you praise him when you are broken? Can you shout his name when you are discouraged? He is my all in all. He is my all on all. He is my all to all. That is my question. I have finished my course. I have finished my course. Hey, great! Will not detour me. Pain will not derail me. Strengthlessness will not stop me. 
I am unstoppable. I am resilient. I break forth. I break the rules for the Lord. Traditions of men that are vanity upon vanity. They will not stop me. I am the spirit and the word. And I am carrying the revival of the Lord. May I run a straight path in anything that will happen to me on the way. I will finish my course. I will keep the faith. And the Lord has promised me that blessed are them that dies in the Lord for now. Because there wait for them a crown of righteousness. Who are you working for? Who is worthy to live for? Who is worthy to die for? Who is worthy to go to jail for? Who is worthy to be persecuted for? Who is worthy to even lose all your valuables together with your dignity for? Worthy is the Lamb of God that was slain from the eternity. Worthy is the Lamb of God full of power, wisdom, glory, riches, and all splendor. Worthy is the Lord who was and is and is to come. Worthy is the Lord of my affection. Worthy is the Lord of my isolation with Him. Worthy is the Lord of being rejected for Him. Worthy is the Lord of suffering for. Worthy is the Lord of my love, my time, my money, my life, my all. Worthy is the Lord. That is the question I want to pose to you tonight. Who is worthy of your tears? Who is worthy of your prayers? Who is worthy of your rejection and your sufferings? Who is worthy of your time? Who is worthy of your love? Of your giving? Who is worthy? To me, worthy is the Lord. Christ Jesus. His death took a street boy like ZG to be an apostle. Can his cross be made vanity because of your weaknesses? Don't you know? That in Romans 1 16 he said not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation first the Jews then the Greeks and everyone indeed it is rejected 
Jews and the Greeks wants the sign it is foolishness to those who are perishing but to us it's life everlasting can you finish your course of mine in this church. I love her so dearly. Sinotando. Sometime last year when everything was happening in this ministry the enemy took hold of her heart. She started to speak against me to brethren and to everyone who was outside and those who left the church. I heard everything she said. One day I took her out. We went to spare. We sat down. I said to her everything you've been saying about me and against me it came to my ears but let me tell you something my love for you is constant and unchanging there's nothing you can say that can make me unlove you I allow my heart to love you in the midst of everything you said about me. She started to cry. I hugged her. I said, Sins. 
works, she works very hard. Because I never allowed my emotions to rob me of my position in the Lord. My brothers and sisters, in the book of Matthew 18.35, the Bible says, if you do not forgive one another with all of your heart, the Father will not forgive you. When the enemy attacks us, he's not going to bring people from outside is going to look at the weak hearts and enter. Once he enters, those people will cause division. Love must rule and reign in our hearts. If you are struggling to forgive certain people who jeopardized Drag your name in the mud. Every time when you are on your knees, pray for them until they come out of your heart. Forgiveness is essential and compulsory for us, children of God. We live a life of love. This man of God called Paul. In all the betrayals he received in the ministry. We hear him. In this same chapter. At my first answer, no man stood with me, which means all his friends forsook him. But all men forsake me. I pray, God, that it may not be laid church even when he saw that he was betrayed by his sons his right hand men people like Demas and Alexandria he says I pray that God may not lay this charge against them. My brothers and sisters, in the storm that we are about to enter, for us to enter into the international, we're going to win by love. Jesus. I repeat myself. In this phase, The only thing that is going to win with is love. Loving one another. Forgiving one another. Understanding one another. Some of us are weak. We are not same in strength. Love wins all battles. Remembering even the Stephen of the old. When he was about to die being stoned, he said, Lord, please, don't lay this against them. Please, don't lay this against them. It's my prayer tonight that you find it in your hearts to forgive one another understand one another to love one another Jesus I have fought a good fight I have 
finished my course. Paul said, the question is, how about you? What about you? Will Jesus, when it is going to be your day tomorrow, can he announce to all heavens and say, guys, tomorrow he's coming? Can you create an atmosphere of excitement in heaven? Because if it's my day tomorrow to depart, tonight the Lord tells the saints, the patriarchs, the prophets, the apostles and the angels that guys, by this time tomorrow, Sergi is coming. There will be too much expectation. Will you finish your course? Let us all stand. received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But tonight you want to give your life to God. Can you kindly raise up your hand so that I may give you Jesus. He is available even tonight. If all of us we are saved, let us thank the Lord for this message.
Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.